It's a very good cause for boys town and girls town. We all know what it was like to grow up as kids and some of us were luckier than others. You know, some kids come from broken families, orphans, uh, they've had a tough start to life, they've had bad experiences and they're on the path to redemption. So I think it's good to get people back because sometimes when you lose youngsters, you don't get them back and uh, their lives can come to a premature end or they can get into bad ways that will impact them for the rest of their lives. So it's good to get them back and uh, I'm really pleased that we can help in a small way and uh, just show some force along with our colleagues uh, across Johannesburg to, to assist. Very good course. I'm over a hundred thousand rand. I didn't quite get the number when I left the office, but uh, I know we were over a hundred thousand rand. So hopefully by the end of tonight we'll have a little bit more. The money's still coming in. So one of the things we've had to do in our jobs one time or another is work all night. Um, so we've had all-nighters when we didn't get any sleep. Um, so we've done it before, but we haven't done it outside. So I think we're sort of half prepared and uh, I think we'll be fine. You know, we've got lots of warm clothes and, um, you know, tomorrow's another day and uh, we'll get through it and hopefully uh, we'll look back and say it was a good cause and it was a good statement to make. You know, people often think CEOs of companies are um, living in their ivory towers, they don't care about what happens, but I think the world has changed over the last 10 years. I think uh, certainly if we, if we look at the initiative that the has been taken, it's incredible because we do have a lot of challenges in this country and while this is a very, very small gesture, it is certainly hoping to make awareness of what some of those challenges are and uh, from a Nissan and an Infinity point of view, we've actually decided to become more than just participating tonight but also become a sponsor from the vehicle side and be a participant and it's something we hope to take forward over the years to come. You men mentioned the sponsorship, can you elaborate on that and then also well, what was the pledge that, that, that uh, Nissan and Infinity brought today? Well from a sponsorship point of view obviously it is to be a participant and we supply vehicles and various other things. And from a pledge, we've uh, managed with a number of our suppliers, dealers and staff to raise a fair amount of money and I think at the moment it's around about 250,000 and still growing. And it's been absolutely incredible to see the response from uh, our business partners, our staff, uh, companies like PASDEC and JCI who, who've really come to the party and stepped up. So certainly I, I'm here as more of a, a part of a, a bigger group um, than personally but uh, it's going to be great fun and at this stage it's not that cold. No it's not and how are you feeling? We've got another, I think we're in about an hour in, we've got another 11 hours or so to go. Are you? It's very early but I think it's going to be a fantastic experience. Uh, something very different and takes one out of one's comfort zone but something I'm looking forward to and uh, we live in a crazy world. Tonight uh, I'll be sleeping on the street here and tomorrow night I'm on a plane at 37,000 feet flying somewhere else so it's going to be a great uh, experience. I'm really looking forward to it. And will you be putting in a full day at the office tomorrow? Yeah, I've got a video conference at 8 o'clock so uh, back in Victoria. So hopefully I'm going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> the, the cause to raise awareness both for homelessness and also to raise awareness for girls in Boys Town. I think that was a really a really amazing um, cause in the first place but secondly I think it was great the opportunity to raise money so first you know awareness is all great but we you know being part of a uh, of a cause like this can raise over 20 million rand for boys and girls town I think it's really amazing and it's actually for that reason uh, I, I chose to be part of it and then on top of all those good things it is also an opportunity just to step back and just say you know look we are extremely fortunate in our own personal capacities and so just an opportunity to step back and say we are extremely fortunate be, but being able to be part of something bigger is why I chose to be here. You know Anglo Platinum has got a massive social program and many of the things that we do do things that are similar to this but in a much smaller scale and we do it on our own and we do it you know we have drop-in centers and we have uh, youth centers and care centers pretty much around all of our operations because where our operations are it's in the rural areas much of the areas that we work in are poor have got uh, limited infrastructure and so you find lots of homelessness in those areas so we do a lot of this kind of work and, and it sort of felt like the right thing um, to be part of, of this initiative and that's why I chose to be here. And how much money did, did uh, Anglo manage to contribute towards, 
towards the cause? So at the, you know, of course up front we each had to put in a hundred thousand rand, but uh, as we speak, there's collections going on at all the mines and you know so people donating 100 bucks 150 rand so there's lots of additional little bits and pieces that are still on their way so i don't yet know what the total amount is but the sort of base amount has been a uh, hundred thousand and and uh, we'll contribute a bit more than that um and we're about an hour in or you know we've got, got about 11 hours to go how are you feeling do you think you're going to manage you don't think it'll be too cold <laughs> I think everyone's worried that the CEOs are very soft. No, I think we'll be fine and uh, we actually need the temperature to drop a bit so that we don't get too hot with all these layers that we already have. No, I think we'll be fine and I'm, you know, I'm sure in the early hours of the morning uh, we'll complain a bit but uh, I'm looking forward to it. And will you be putting in a full day at the office tomorrow? No, absolutely. I leave very early tomorrow morning up to one of the mines. I host a board subcommittee on uh, sustainable development up at Amundelbult tomorrow. So, you know, we have a full day with a board meeting tomorrow afternoon. So now there's, uh, there's a full day's work ahead of us tomorrow. We've had amazing support. It's quite remarkable, the number of CEOs. Why do you think they're all so keen to come out and spend a night on the streets of Johannesburg? You know, I think the way this whole event or evening has been positioned, um, Vincent Bones, who is uh, an idols winner, he uh, is an ex uh, Boys and Girls Town uh, graduate. And um, when we launched this, he said something that really resonated with me, and I think it resonates with a lot of people. He said, Do this for one night so that we don't have to do it forever. And I think the response has been so overwhelming because it's a clear way of demonstrating uh, really a willingness to show empathy. I mean, we know that our country is uh, deeply divided in terms of wealth. Um, the camaraderie. And it's just an but evening, it's one night, it's not the uh, magic uh, elixir to solving sure that, uh, a big social problem, but we will raise uh, close to 25 million rand this evening for boys and girls town. It's a, it's a very commendable uh, institution that uh, looks after boys and girls internationally and we're doing our, our part here in South Africa. So I think everyone here is really just excited to be able to show support in this way. And how are you feeling? We're about an hour in, we've got 11 hours to go. Are you are you still feeling excited or are you sort of a bit nervous about the impending temperature drop? Look, I, I think I, I knew there would be, it's a bit of an occasion having all the top CEOs together outside of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. For me personally, um, I want to focus on the evening and what I'm here for, which is really to reach out to people who aren't as fortunate. You know, tomorrow I'll go home to a warm bed and a, and a warm house. And for many South Africans, that's not the reality. So uh, I think the evening for me has a lot of meaning. Speaking of tomorrow, will you be putting in a full day's work at the office? I must admit I've kept my diary a bit flexible tomorrow. Uh, but I will start the day with a 6.40 a.m. interview uh, by John Robbie. So I think I will be a bit busy tomorrow. I really felt it's a good cause. And I think it's an opportunity for us who have had the fortunate opportunities we have got to give back to the less privileged. I grew up poor. I have experienced this difficult and cold winters when I was young. I know how it felt, but coming back here was like taking me back and grounding me to what it actually is and what it's all about. So today for me was not just a good cause, but simply a reminder of what it is that we need to solve around poverty. And coming from your background, do you feel you're perhaps better equipped than some of your your counterparts here today to last the 12 hours and sort of, you know, stick, stick it through? I have attended a few night vigils for various reasons. So I think we are reasonably equipped. I don't think anything equips you for what the night might be because this is one of the coldest nights in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm sure we all are challenged. We are anxious, but the reality is, I think we are all realizing that this is such a great cause and it's worth supporting. So it's fantastic to see everybody here and, and share ideas, think through, but also reflect on our less privileged people. And, and in terms of sponsorship, how much is Lonman bringing to this initiative? Right. I donated 10,000 myself and then my colleagues at Lonmin from the board to the executive committee to the employees donated 56,000 and then Lonmin then topped that up 
to make it the 100,000. So it's really, I have no doubt that there may still be more that will come through as we go through the time as everybody realizes this. Then my team at Lone Mini has created a WhatsApp facility where I'm telling them everything tonight about what's going on and what's, what's up here. So I'm sure there will be so more that will be motivated to even put in some more donations. And my last question, are you going to be putting in a full day's work tomorrow? Are you going into the office straight from here? I'm expected to be in the office and uh, my uh, boss, my PA Melody, has already booked me for my first meeting at 9 o'clock. So I will rush home, take a shower, because she needs me clean and ready for tomorrow morning. It's a freezing evening, we've got over 250 CEOs and MDs. Did you expect such an amazing turnout? Well, from the initial presentation from the organizers, I actually did, and I think that it was important that uh, so many CEOs have taken it upon themselves to contribute to this particularly important cause. The challenge of uh, people sleeping on the streets of Johannesburg and throughout the world is quite significant, and the fact that we collectively are sitting here and saying what contribution can we make, both as the public and private se sector, to address the applied, I think is a particularly good statement. And why was it important for you as the mayor and the city of Johannesburg to be represented here tonight? Well, for us, we're a city that confronts significant challenges. We attract about 10,000 new migrants into the city of Johannesburg that are in search of opportunity. And when people come here, they don't always find up appropriate accommodation and adequate accommodation. Many of them live in shacks, in slums, uh, until such time that they are able to be on their feet and prosper from there. And many of them go into the streets. So uh, we have about 6,000 people that we calculate to be on the streets on a daily basis. We've got a team in the city of Johannesburg that does a daily audit together with a network of non-governmental organizations and provides the necessary support that we can uh, as, the private sec as the public sector. And I think that the fact that the private sector has come on board and said, how can we now lend a hand to this particularly important issue? Is it great statement for South Africa and for the world because this initiative is not just a South African initiative, it's an in international initiative and we need to mobilize more and more cities and more and more captains of industry to contribute towards this particularly important issue. And do you plan on spending me the whole 12 hours out on the streets? I'll be here for the whole night, I'll leave at 6 o'clock in the morning like everybody else. Um, but I think uh, at this rate the camaraderie is good, everybody is interacting. I suspect very few people will actually fall asleep Tonight. I agree with you actually. And are you going to be putting in a full day at the office tomorrow morning? Uh, tomorrow morning, yes. Uh, in fact, in the morning we have a project that we're launching in the office at about 10 o'clock. So I'll be back in the office uh, first thing in the morning. We'll just go home, refresh and get back to the office. Uh, I'm sure I'll doze off a few times in the office, but uh, well, I, I think that uh, we'll just have to work around it. It's one day to make a sacrifice for people that in fact experience this on a daily basis. When I first heard about the initiative uh, of the CEO Sleep Out, and what exactly they are about, uh, you know, raising funds to contribute to the NGO and non-profit organization Girls and Boys Town uh, to help street kids, you know, young people who are in the streets of our cities, to give them a second chance in life, to reconstruct their lives. I thought that what a wonderful uh, uh, contribution that uh, this uh, business people who are here tonight are doing and and I thought that it is the sort of thing we in government are doing a lot to try and and assist uh, the vulnerable in our society and in our communities but government alone will not succeed so we always need a partnership and I think I'm here tonight uh, about this partnership between between government and businesses to help address the fundamental social and economic problems that our country faces, to help give uh, other human beings who have who are less fortunate uh, another chance in life. You know, uh, the story of girls and, and, and boys towns for me came to me through a young man, uh, Bones, who went to audition for, for idols, you know, and uh, uh, became the winner and uh, he was in the streets in some uh, some of the, the, the I think is a town here in our province Ranfontein and then he he was assisted by this uh, uh, NGO that uh, helps support uh, young people who are street children to give them hope 
uh, to look at life afresh, to rebuild their lives and, 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 and succeed. So I thought what a wonderful thing to contribute, uh, to join this effort and contribute to bringing out of our streets uh, more young people who, if given a second chance, if assisted, they can be anything that uh, they need to be, as uh, this story can, can show. So, so the important thing essentially tonight is uh, not just uh, sleeping in the street, but is to make a statement that partnership is important uh, and citizen mobilization is also important to address social challenges that we face in our society, to help other human beings to build a more caring society. And those of us who can, uh, let's contribute more, and not only as government, but as in individuals, like the people who are sleeping out here tonight. Uh, and so I have made a, my own contribution here, not on, as government, uh, be, but as part of the initiatives I also carry out to ra I raise funding uh, through a golf day. Uh, I raise funding to support education and health and sports uh, amongst young people. So, so that's it's the sort of thing, this focus on the youth. It's, a, it's the critical thing for our country because the youth are the future. And will you be spending all 12 hours out on the streets or...? I am going to, to live here only at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And will you be putting in a full day's work after that? Uh, tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow I'm working. I'm in the legislature tomorrow in the morning. I leave from here, go home and have a shower and change and dress properly. You know, in the legislature, I can't go into the legislature like this. Uh, I must get to the legislature and appear there as if I had a good night's sleep. Uh, that's the job that needs to be done. To, to really change our country, we need to work more than 24 hours. I was living in Sydney, getting experience within the CSI and social development spaces, and I think I've been in Sydney for about a week, or a week and a half, and I saw the COC part, well, they call it the Vinny COC part in Australia, on the TV. And I just looked at it and I thought, this is the most phenomenal, phenomenal concept. Um, not only is it doing tremendous benefits to the homeless communities in Australia, but it's also bringing together the whole community and the care that people need to have as leaders um, and a respect that they have a responsibility for people less fortunate. So I went and tracked down Bernard Fion, who came out to South Africa for our media launch in April, and worked with him for about a year and a half, two years, um, to make sure all the necessary requirements were in place, and then came back home about 12 months ago, and uh, Tish met Tish, and Tish has substantial experience with the same CSI space, and she's now the chair of the CSI Park Trust, so that's really the background to it. I think the magic about the CSD part is that it's the unobvious um, ambits of the project that actually were truly, truly benefits. So like for example this evening, I think we have about four or five schools that are all sleeping out. So it's got such far reaching um, effects, it's not just a matter of just one night uh, sleeping on the streets, it's bringing together school children, they were all singing messages and uh, singing songs for the CEOs posting up across all the social media platforms. So it's far reaching. The idea amongst the CEOs is not just to give them a night on the streets, but to actually develop empathy for the homeless. Instead of turning one's back or simply giving funds, but actually getting involved. And that's particularly in Australia, where it's been going for 10 years, has proved to be the case. That it's changed attitudes. It's changed completely the view of homelessness and developed involvement beyond what one might just think is a charitable gesture. And then we intend next year to do it again in Johannesburg but then to take it nationwide to the major centres. It's been wonderful. I think we've probably got the most influential businessmen in Johannesburg here this evening which speaks volumes for their leadership styles. And I also think the space in which South Africa is currently at within so many different areas of transition, um, that this event is also gonna be touching them and bringing people um, in power together and to realize South Africa can move forward. And it's up to every single one of us to take on that responsibility.